a tiny foretaste of what you are going to experience this morning. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Me too. My name is Carrie Yoder. I serve as the associate pastor here, and we are delighted that you are here this Palm Sunday. Uh, we have an exciting cantata for you this morning where we will hope to guide your heart and worship of God today. Um, I want to say thanks to you for being here. I also want to give you greetings from uh, Pastor Charlie, our senior pastor, who is in Northern Ireland visiting his family. He is due to fly back tomorrow. But he told me that he's going to be on the live feed. We are live streaming this service. Welcome to everybody online. And so our choir wanted to give a nice wave to Pastor Charlie. <laughs> I know. He's going to be excited and touched. He's very sad that he's not here today. But thank you to the technology. He can be here with us today. Here in our Christian life, we do know that the Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of the world and that we are called to be that light here and everywhere we go. And so we light a candle at the beginning of each service to represent our call and Jesus' call to be the light of the world. Welcome, light of Christ. And as if we have light and as we've gathered together, We've begun worship. We do so with the peace of Christ. So I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us stand and join our voices together in song.
super and let us affirm our faith together. We'll use the words on the screen. We believe in God, the creator of all things, the giver of life and breath. We believe in the Jesus who rode into triumph into Jerusalem. We trust in the Messiah who was crucified, died, and was buried. And we believe that he will come again. We believe in the Holy Spirit, continually poured out, refreshing our lives, leading us into a new day, ever birthing the church, the body of Christ in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. We have so much going on in the life of our church. We have created many ways for many different people to get involved, but for the purposes of growing in their own discipleship. I invite you to turn your eyes to the screen just to see a little picture of what's going on that you can get involved in. Let's watch. I know we have a lot going on in the next week, and we'll talk about that in just a second, but I am so excited. I couldn't wait to tell you that we have just an amazing event coming up right after Easter, and I want you to mark it on your calendars. Mark down Wednesday, April 20th at 6 o'clock. In the sanctuary, we're going to have four very special guests joining us for a special evening. It's the men from Four From Home. That's right, Cameron, Hump, Paul, and our own Bill Sanino who rode across the Atlantic to raise funds and attention for veteran suicides, they're gonna be here to tell us their story of their adventure and to answer your questions. Now, the members of Four From Home have a connection here with Memorial. Of course, we watched their whole journey. We prayed for them every step of the way, or every row of the way. I hope you'll join us to celebrate them Wednesday, April 20th at six o'clock in the sanctuary, and we'll also live stream that on Facebook. Now, our confirmands are getting very close to Confirmation Sunday. Before that happens, a couple of them are going to be baptized, and we want you to join in on that. Join us this Saturday at 11 a.m. at Main Beach. You can see some images on the screen of some past beach baptisms. This is such a holy moment with our pastors baptizing individuals in the waves on our beach. Doing it out in the open at Main Beach, there's such no better form of evangelism and living out someone's calling. We invite you, our church family, to join in and celebrate with these beach baptisms this coming Saturday, 11 a.m. at Main Beach. I promise you it will be one of the most holy moments of the week, even during Holy Week. And today does start Holy Week, it's Palm Sunday after all. And I have a special invitation from Dr. Joan for two special services that we'll be having this week. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. For some of us though, it's hard to think about the Christ has died part, but that's important to keep it in the story because otherwise Easter is not as celebratory if we haven't gone through the pain and walked with Jesus during that week. So Monday, Thursday, we'll have a service and we celebrate communion and we'll have a modern day tableau here in the sanctuary with Jesus and the 12 disciples as if they walked off Center Street to gather around the table. Then Good Friday, for me, the most dramatic, holiest service in the entire church year when we actually walk with Jesus to the cross and remember the crucifixion. It's powerful. It's dark. It's sad. But it's an important part of our faith. Again, that's Monday, Thursday worship at 6 o'clock p.m. in the sanctuary and Good Friday worship also at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. And we'll also have a digital Good Friday service going out at 6 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. And while I've got your attention, let's do three and a half things. Let's go over those times for the Easter services one more time. I want you to say them with me, folks. 745, 9 o'clock, 1015, 1130, and then 11 o'clock our digital service on Facebook Live or YouTube. Now, if you didn't get all those times, it's okay. Go find a handout that's in the sanctuary that has Holy Week at the top. It'll have those times on there and you can pick them out because you don't want to be late on Easter. Celebrating and welcoming home the Four From Home team, supporting our church family at Beach Baptisms, 
and experiencing Holy Week through special services. These are just some of the ways that you can live your calling this week through Memorial. Did you take notes? You know what you're going to come to? It's all right. You can find it all online at umconline.com, and you can go see it all again so you can decide how to get involved. Yesterday, we um, had this amazing festival. Many of you were here. In fact, if you were here yesterday, will you raise your hand? Excellent. We shut down 6th Street. We partnered with First Presbyterian across the street. We brought in bounce houses and hot dogs and face painting and... Uh, we told the story of who is Jesus, and then we welcomed the community to join us. Um, we cooked 960 hot dogs, and we gave them all away. Um, and we had, we guessed, about 1,200 people, because there are people that don't eat hot dogs like myself. So we're going to add it, you know. And it was a wonderful time. And we got to partner together with our neighbors. We got to do it together. We had about 65 volunteers from our church and more from over there. We could not have done it without each other. We are participating in a family of God. We are participating in bringing God's grace to our community, and you get to be a part of that. However you can be a part of that, we are glad that you are a part of that. We do take up an offering in the service, which gives us the ability to pay for things like this, to continue in ministry. But there are many ways that you participate. Prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. All of that bring us together to serve God. If you would like to give financially today, you can see how to do that on the screen, mumconline.com forward slash give. If you're in the sanctuary, we'll pass plates. If you're online, you can follow the links there. Let us pray. Most holy God, you have called us to participate in your kingdom. You have asked us to be your partners, and we would like to take and say we hear you, Lord. Bless the offering that we take up, the gifts that we receive through our prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness, that we may continue to make an impact in this community and around the world for you. In your name we pray. Amen.
as we turn our hearts to prayer this morning, I remind you that you can go online at any time to, to put in a prayer request, mumconline.com forward slash prayer. Or if you're on the live feed right now, you can put it in the community feed and one of our pastors will be praying with you in live real time. As I use words that are my words today, they become your words. And the prayers that we pray, the ones that I pray out loud and the ones you pray in the silence of your own heart, may they go to God together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the first Palm Sunday, people cried out for salvation. They pleaded with Jesus to save them from many things. Oppression by the Romans, their political unrest. Correction of the temple, their religious unrest. We have these things and many others that we need relief and saving from, too. Hear now, O oh Lord, as we express in the privacy of our own hearts our petitions to you. For Jesus, you are our living hope. You are the one who saves. Salvation meaning wholeness, Lord, we need it. We need it for ourselves. We need it for our families. We need it for our places of work, for our schools, for our community, for your church, for those who are, in, who are suffering in body, in mind, in spirit, and for our world. For an end to the evil, injustice, and oppression, for an end to the hate, the division, and the despairing, Lord, we need your salvation. We need your wholeness, and we need it now, in our mourning, in our grieving, in our lamenting, and in our loss. We need it in our rejoicing and our celebration. We need your salvation. We need your wholeness. You are the Lamb of God, the King of Kings. You are the Christ, the Anointed One, the Savior of us all. And we cling to you and your cross, and we cry, Hosanna. Make this real in us. Real in your church and real in your world. And hear us now as we join our voices aloud together, praying the prayer that your Son taught us all, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So today has been filled with much pomp and circumstance. For those of you who grew up in a liturgical tradition, you know exactly what today is all about. Palm Sunday. You know about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem at the beginning of Holy Week. You know all of what is about to come in the week ahead. However, if you didn't grow up in a church that was liturgical, you may not have celebrated the seasons like Advent or Lent or all of Holy Week, and you may wonder, why do you spend so much time on these traditions? The traditions of the church year focus on telling the stories of our faith and particularly the stories of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. From Advent, the season leading up to Jesus' birth, until today, we focus on the life of Jesus. And then the rest of the week, we focus on just the last week of Jesus' earthly life before his crucifixion. And this is what our cantata will focus on as well. In the cantata, we're going to begin at Jesus' baptism at the River Jordan. And then they will sing through the highlights of Jesus' ministry, his miracles and healings and caring for people. And then about halfway through the cantata, you'll hear the stories that we celebrate today, Palm Sunday, with Jesus riding on the donkey and a crowd pressing in, shouts of Hosanna, 
and ride on King Jesus. And when I think about that day, the very first Palm Sunday, the excitement that had been building about Jesus since his conception and birth carried on through his childhood. I remember the stories of people being healed, the stories of people learning from him, and the witness that they had of many of the amazing things that, they, that he did. And by this day, many of them believed he is the Son of God. They had been waiting for a Messiah. The scriptures had told them it will be a king who will come in and save them, would bring them wholeness. So when they have Jesus riding in, and the cloaks are laid, and the palm branches are waved, it is exciting and joy-filled. But then you'll notice as the cantata continues, as Jesus' life continued, the mood changes. The closer that Jesus grew to, drew to Good Friday and his crucifixion, the crowd around him went from shouts of joy to shouts of crucify him. This change in the crowd can be puzzling to us, especially if we skip from Palm Sunday to Easter and right over Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and all of the other stories in there. If we skip from one to the next, we'll have an unbalanced view of Jesus' journey. For you see, Jesus had high points in his life, and he had also low points of loneliness and frustration and anger, many of those in the last week of his life. So one of the things that this cantata will do for us today is it will help us enter in to that last week. It will show us the wide breadth of emotion that Jesus had, weaving together spirituals in the African-American tradition and our beloved hymns, we will get to go on a journey with the, the musicians here today. This journey that will remind us that the, the trials of our lives, the oppression of the, our, our history, is something we can overcome with our faith and our conviction. Weaving these together, we'll go on a journey together. And we want to invite you into this, knowing that you are not alone, as Jesus was not alone, God was with him, and God is with us. So let us open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our souls to continue to worship God through music today. <laughs> We are extending today a warm welcome and hello to our family in Northern Ireland. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and this whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I am well pleased. With him I am well pleased.
Beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish the poor people. At once they left their nets and followed him. In all, Jesus called to his ministry twelve disciples. Following in faith, they walked beside him throughout his travels. They beheld miracles and wonders, and he began to teach them in a new way. In time, nearly all would be martyred. Through loneliness and rejection, persecution, and even unto death, they followed on, choosing Jesus over all. Thank you. 
Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. When Jesus saw the people, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he began leading them and teaching them many wonderful things. Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light.
Jesus began to draw great multitudes wherever he went. His reputation as a healer and teacher had grown throughout the land. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the chief priests began to plot to kill him, for many of the Jews were believing in him. When Jesus and his chosen ones approached Jerusalem, many palm branches were gathered and they went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and blessed is the King of Israel. into Jerusalem, and as the time with, for Passover was drawing near, Jesus began to prepare his disciples for the Passover feast. Jesus knew the time was near for him to leave the world and go to the Father. They all gathered in an upper room and shared the evening meal together. During the meal, Jesus revealed more of his mission to the twelve. To the amazement of the disciples, the teacher wrapped a towel around his waist, poured water into a basin, and began to wash their feet. When he had finished washing their feet, he returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, 
nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. After the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples moved from the upper room to a nearby garden they had visited many times before. During the cool of the evening, they rested and pondered all that they had experienced. Jesus went ahead of them deeper into the garden to pray. 
Jesus withdrew about a stone's throw from them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. By the glare of blazing torches and the clamor of centurion armor, Jesus was arrested and brought to Pilate's court to face his accusers. Responding to the crowd's cries for crucifixion, Pilate gave the order for Jesus to be executed. The soldiers showed no mercy as they beat him and laid a heavy cross upon his back. Jesus then began the slow and painful climb up to Calvary. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which is Arabic for Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross, it read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The sky grew dark as sounds of a gruesome crucifixion <coughs> echoed across the rocky landscape. Even in his final, fragile moments of life, Jesus loved those he had come to save. Those final, precious phrases 
reveal a heart of mercy and a message of hope for the world. No words of complaining or condemnation, no words of bitterness or regret, one last expression of love. Father, forgive them. And grace fell like gentle rain upon a parched and withered creation. Father, forgive them. And the garden began to dream once again of life. One last cry. It is finished. And the journey to hope was made clear and the path cleared of all stones. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, our lamb and our shepherd is the journey and he the journey's end.
what a journey we went on today. Amen? Amen. We went from joy and gladness, the mood changed, and we end with not a word. I am so thankful for the narrators and the singers and the musicians and Dr. Joan and Jeffrey who led us on this journey today. I'm thankful that you could summon all of them together, Dr. Joan, and lead us in worship. So as we leave this place today, let us lead with, leave with God going with us. And go in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.